Geometry, Concept 7A, Algebraic Properties. In this lesson, we're going to go over a bunch of properties that we're going to be able to use to help us with our algebraic proofs. Some of these are going to be familiar, and some of these may be a little bit new, but let's go through these together. So in this table, here are all our algebraic properties that we need to know. Start off, the very first ones that we want to be able to know here are our addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division properties. These are very similar to when we were solving equations back in Algebra 1. The addition property says that if we add the same thing to both sides of the equation, then they're still going to be equal. For example, if I have x minus 4 equal to b, but then I add 4 to both sides, then that means that x equals b plus 4. Similarly with subtraction, if I were to have x minus 4 equal to b, but then I subtract 1 from both sides, and that would give us negative 4 minus 1, which would be a negative 5, that would be the same thing as just subtracting 1 from b. So like we're just doing it to both sides of the equation like we learned in Algebra 1. Similarly, with multiplication, if I multiply both sides of the equation, then they're still going to be equal to each other. So for example, if x equals 7, then 3x is going to equal to 3 times 7, which is 21. And with division, if I divide both sides by the same thing, then they're still going to be equal as long as b does not equal 0, because we can never divide by 0. Another one that should seem relatively familiar to you is the distribution property. The distribution property says that if we have a, a value c that we multiply a quantity by, in this case a plus b, that's going to be the same thing as c times the first term plus c times the second term. So like in this case, if we take 4 times the quantity x plus 2 equal to 5, that would be the same thing as if we take 4 times everything inside the parentheses. In this case, 4x plus 8 equal to 5. Now these next four might seem a little bit new. The very first one we're going to talk about here is substitution. So if you think about the word substitute, that means to replace. So substitution says, the substitution property says that if a is equal to b, then that means we can go ahead and substitute both a and b interchangeably for each other. For example, if a plus c equals d, then that means that b plus c must also equal d. Our example here, we know that says x is equal to 7. And the expression that we're given is x plus 5 equals y. Well, that's the same thing as saying then that we can plug in 7 for the x here and get 7 plus 5 equal to y. Similarly, we're also going to think of substitution as another way of saying combining like terms. Since we're just combining like terms on one side of the equation, then that would be like substituting them for the single term that we get together. For example, if 5 plus 4 equals x, then we can go ahead and combine the 5 plus 4 together to get 9, i.e. substitute the 9 in for the 5 plus 4 to make that equal x as well. So anytime we're plugging in and swapping those out, or if we are just combining like terms, that is going to be the substitution property. These last three are going to be fairly new, and so we need to make sure that we really pay attention to these. The first property we're going to talk about is the reflexive property. The reflexive property just says that a variable or a value is going to be equal to itself. For example, if x is equal to x, then x is equal to x as well. It's kind of like saying that a value has got to be equal to its same thing. And you can kind of think of that like a reflection, so it's a reflexive, like as you see yourself in the mirror, your reflection is equal to your own reflection. The symmetric property involves two terms. This one says that if a is equal to b, then b goes equals to a. Think about the word symmetric, that means that it's got to be able to fold in half and split over each other. So like I kind of drew this butterfly here, but it says that the left side is going to be equal to the right side and vice versa. It doesn't matter on which side of the line it appears. It's the same thing with both sides of the equation. If 9 is equal to x, well then that also means that x is equal to 9. And we want to make sure that we always write that our final statements and our proofs with our variable coming first. So it's always important for us to use that symmetric property at the very end if we need to. But since the left side has got to be equal to the right side, we can go ahead and swap those interchangeably. The last one here is the transitive property, which involves three different terms. Transitive property says that if A is equal to B, but B is equal to C, then A must be equal to C as well. So if we have, another way of saying that is if we have two things equal to the same thing, well, then those two things must be equal as well. 
For example, if x is equal to 7 and x is also equal to y, well then 7 must be equal to y as well. These three properties we're going to be using in our proofs a lot, so let's make sure that we know these. Now let's practice using these algebraic properties. For example, in these first five examples, we want to just demonstrate which property is being used. The first one here says, if 3x is equal to 9 plus 27y, then x is equal to 3 plus 9y. Well, if we think about how we got from the first equation to our second, we might note here that all we really did here was divide everything by 3. So this right here is going to be an example of the division property. And that's because we did it to both sides of the equation. The second one here says that if 8x equals 12, then 8x plus 5 equals 17. Well, if we think about how we got from the first equation to the second, notice that we added 5 to the left side of the equation, and then we added 5 to the right, and so 12 plus 5 is 17. And since we added both sides, this is going to be the addition property. Our next one says that if 2x plus 1 equals 3x plus 5x, then 2x plus 1 equals 8x. Notice to go from the first equation to the second, all we did here was combine like terms on the right-hand side there to get that 3x plus 5x equal to 8x. Since it was all on the same side, that right there is just going to be substitution. This is not the addition property since it wasn't on both sides. Our next one says that if x plus 4 equals 9, then 9 equals x plus 4. Notice we have two different things on both sides of the equation, but they're just swapped interchangeably. Since there's two parts here and they're symmetric on both sides, this right here is just like we're flipping them, so this right here is just going to be our symmetric property. And then the last one here, if we have x equal to a and x equal to b, then a must be equal to b. Well, we have two things equal to the exact same thing, which means that they must be equal, and so this is our transitive property here. Pause the video here and go ahead and try to answer these questions on your own. So let's go ahead and look at number six here. It says, if eight plus two equals x, then 10 equals x. Why is this an example of the substitution property and not addition? Well, if we know here, all we did was we added the 8 plus 2 to get 10. And since it's on the same side of the equation, again, that's just going to be combining like terms or substitution. Similarly, if we look at 7, we have if 2x equals 8 times 4, then 2x equals 32. Notice, this is, again, since we're just doing the 8, plus, or 8 times 4 on one side of the equation, this is not multiplication. So this is going to be substitution. So this is on the same side. Number 8 says if 5x plus 1 equals 9, then 5x equals 8. Why is this an example of subtraction? Well, if we note here, we removed a 1 from the left side and we moved a, removed a 1 from the right side. And so since we subtracted from both sides of the equation, this will be subtraction, not substitution. Remember, if it's one side, it's the substitution. If it's from both sides, it's going to be that operation property. Go ahead and pause the video here and go ahead and try these on your own. Okay. In this case, number nine says, your answers might be a little bit different than what I'm going to write here, but this is just an example. So we're trying examples here. Number nine says, write an example of the division property as a conditional. Remember, a conditional from a previous lesson, a conditional is the same thing as an if-then statement. So we're saying if something, then this is going to be its con or it's going to be its consequence. So we can think of that as hypothesis and conclusion. So my first one here is if I'm just going to write the hypothesis if 2x equals 10. Okay, and so since we're doing division here, that means that we need to divide both sides of our equation. Well, if I divide both sides by 2, then we're going to get the equation, or sorry, the conclusion here, that x is going to be equal to 5. This right here is going to be the division since we divided on both sides. Number 10 says, write an example of the symmetric property as a conditional. So I chose to use the hypothesis. If y is equal to 1, well, in this case, remember the symmetric property says that we can just take both sides of the equation and swap the two. 
So if y is equal to 1, then, and we swap, 1 is also going to be equal to y. Let's go ahead and try number 10 here. This one says, finish the conditional using the addition property. Well, our hypothesis here is if x is equal to 9, then our conclusion will be x plus 4. We'll notice on the left-hand side here, we added 4 to the x. And so if we're using the addition property, it means we need to use that on both sides. So if we added 4 to the left, we need to add 4 to the right. And so in this case, 9 plus 4 gives us 13. Number 11 says, finish the conditional using the dist distributive property. Our hypothesis here is if 4 times 2 minus x equals 5, then, so our conclusion is we need to use that distribution property, which means that we need to distribute 4 to both terms inside the parentheses. So that will give us 8 minus 4x equal to 5. Number 12 here says, if 8x plus 2x equals 5 plus 1, then 10x equals 6. Can 8x plus 2x be changed into 10x, and can 5 plus 1 be changed into 6 in the same step of the proof? Explain why or why not. Well, notice in both those cases, all we did was we combined like terms on the left-hand side, and we combined right or combined like terms on the right-hand side. Since we're just doing that substitution on both sides, it's the exact same property, the substitution property in this case, it is totally okay to do that in the exact same line. And so if you want to do all the same property in one line of a proof, that is totally okay. So in this case, we would just write substitution once, but do all that work on one side. So that is an okay thing for us to do in our proofs. Pause the video here and go back and write down any of the examples if we need to. But we need to make sure we know these algebraic properties, because we're going to be using those in our next step, which is our algebraic proofs.